What's up YouTube, this is Collect Pokemon and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about PRPO one for One Piece. So, um, a news has just dropped and that it is that PRPO one uh, that is set to be released on the 27th of July, which is one week from now, has manga rares. And not just any manga rares, but the reprint of all the manga rare that have been released. Now, you know, just to be safe, you know, they, 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 they want to make sure that, you know, you guys feel good and you guys don't feel like you're ripped off. So uh, what they're going to do is they're going to do two things to the card. Uh, the new reprint of these manga rare will have a security stamps on the left hand side of the card, left bottom, which is circled uh, on the screen. And on the right hand side, just above the, uh, you know, set number, there's going to be a little star. You know, this is just to tell you that, hey, one of this is the second edition and the other one is the first edition, but without actually writing first and second on it. You know, you, you know when you know, you know, this kind of thing. Um, and I can tell you that they're going to flood a lot of these manga rare into the market. And, you know, rumor has it that every single case of PRB01, which contains 10 booster boxes, will have one guarantee manga rare. And yeah, that's how crazy it is. And I can tell you that there is a lot of PRB01 that is printed. And therefore, we're going to see a lot of these manga rare flood the market. It is not something that is, it's, it's not something new. You know, Bandai has been doing these stuff, uh, reprints, you know, and reprint more of secret rare cards for a very, very long time. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about um, my feelings toward Bandai card game um, and my speculation as to what might happen to many of the original manga rare, rare card that most people, you know, already owned. You know, what would happen to the price when to reference it using Dragon Ball Super and so on. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hope you guys click the like button, the subscribe button, and also you guys can support me on my membership program. So um, yeah, for two US dollar a month, you guys can support me. Anyway, let's get into this video. So yeah. Um, basically, the most expensive card in One Piece are considered to be manga rares. You know, these cards are usually very, very difficult to pull. Doesn't matter whether it is from the English side of things or the Japanese side of things. They're really, really sought after. And one of the most sought after card here, as you know, I'm going to use this as an example, is the um, Gear 5 Luffy from OP05. The English PSA 10 copy is selling for around 4,000 US dollar, and whereas the Japanese one is selling for a little cheaper, around 3,000 US dollar. And when I say it's cheaper, it is still a lot of money. Now here's the part where I want you guys in the comment section below, tell me, what price do you think that these cards will drop? Would it, will they drop 20%, 30%, 40%, or 50%? You know, or if you, you know, you want to play the devil's advocate, you can tell me that, hey, collect Pokemon. I think that these cards will go up in price because it makes it more rare, you know, because it's first edition, right? So if you want that, that is fine. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Now, this next half is going to be me venting uh, or renting uh, with Bandai. You know, Bandai has always screwed cards up because they don't give a crap about the card game. They only give a crap about their IPs. And uh, I'm really, really salty, to be very honest, with Bandai because they technically screw up Digimon and they screw up Dragon Ball Super. Um, you know, when they first released Union Arena, I have absolutely no faith in them. And actually, even now, I still have no faith in them. And that is the reason why I was so reluctant to buy into One Piece because I know One Piece is going to be Bandai. One Piece is a big IP and, ben and, and, and the One Piece card game is just a card game that Bandai doesn't give a crap about and they can always click the reset button. <clears throat> and this is my personal opinion. I'm not trying to attack Bandai. It is just my personal feeling towards Bandai card game. Anyway, so yeah. Um, and... 
I think that's usually what happens. And and I am very, very familiar with uh, the Dragon Ball Super uh, card game because I've actually really liked the Dragon Ball Super uh, IP. Um, and I knew that Dragon Ball Super or the Dragon Ball IP has been made into trading card game many, many years ago. And I think originally there was there was Bandai and then it was followed by Panini. Um, you know, many of them have different rights. Um, and in the end, I think Bandai rebooted a lot of the, the Dragon Ball Super card game. Um, you know, after the anime was released. And, you know, I was really, really hyped up for that. You know, I actually went to buy uh, two booster boxes of actually the first release. Uh, I think it's called Galactic Battle or Galactic something like that. I actually still have those sealed booster boxes um, and so on. And I, I, I do hope that, you know, you know, Bandai does well in these. And I've collected many of the special rare cards. I graded them and so on, just like any collector would do. Um, as time goes on, um, some sets were good, some sets were bad, um, but majority of them actually held uh, quite a strong value for Dragon Ball Super card, uh, especially sets like Tournament of Powers and so on. And things start to turn down, uh, you know, things start to turn, uh, go downhill. Um, when Bandai started to think about reprints you know when they wanted to reprint more cards but they overestimated or underestimated um, the amount of player in the game and instead of making the game more fun um, yeah they just started to reprint them and there were two sets that was reprinted and um, they call it the second edition and that is the Vermilion Bloodline as well as the Rise of the Unison Warrior so these two sets were, you know, were released at the almost like the hype and, and the highest point in uh, Dragon Ball Super. And this was in the 2020 era. And after two years, after the first release, they reprinted both of these sets uh, as second edition cards. And they don't write second edition on the card. They actually uh, add like a little letters. So... For example, this Broly is actually from the um, Vermilion Bloodline and I couldn't actually find a second edition version of this card because no one really opened them. But here is what they've done. The original one on the bottom left, it says English, E-N. On the reprinted one on the left bottom, we can see it says E-N-R-E. And RE stands for reprint or a second edition. And that's how they distinguish the card. And um, a lot of people would say, hey, collect like Pokemon. You know, did it make the first edition card more expensive? Not for Dragon Ball Super because, you know, it went crashing down. So Dragon Ball Super actually went crashing down. And this was the card, the Broly card, before the reprint. You know, PSA 10 was selling for around 400, uh, three to $400, and some are as high as five, 600 US dollar at a PSA 10. But after the release of the second edition, take a look. These are the next six sales um, with PSA 10, dropping from 460, 320, 266, and finally around a hundred dollars. So it's crazy to see how that reprint actually affect the original version of the card. And um, this is not just that set. The second set, the other Unison uh, Warrior set that was reprinted, Gogeta was one of the hyped up card. Everyone loved it. At release, you know, it was selling, a PSA 10 was selling for over a thousand dollar. But the price actually settled back down to around that five, four or five hundred dollar price range. And after the reprint, it went straight down, 260, 122, and even $80. This is what Bandai has done with those reprints. The reprint of the same card, but simply adding a new stamp, adding a new icon to show that it is different from the original. So usually it doesn't go well, it doesn't do well. And um, it was to a point where Dragon Ball Super you know, no one really care about this card game anymore. What did they do? 
they pressed the restart button and they uh, created Dragon Ball Fusion. And Dragon Ball Fusion, first set, hyped up, did really well in Japan. The second set, no one wants it. So that's the thing. That That's something that it's very, very common for Bandai to do. And um, and that, that, that is why I think that PRB01... Let's put it this way. One Piece is a very, very popular card game. And I think that the Manga Rare will retain some value. But it would definitely drop around 50%. I think at most it will drop 50%. Um, after the PRP01 is released. When a lot of these Manga Rare reprints flood the market. Um, and because of that. Um, because it, it's the same card. You know, people don't really... Most collector will not care unless you're really, really hardcore. You want to be special, but you're not really special anymore. So if you are a collector and you want to collect special cards, you would collect the trophy cards or some tournament card instead of a, a, a card with the first edition, but no one can really tell kind of card. So I think that's gonna that's what's gonna happen. Um, but um, this is my personal opinion, and um, you know, there's only one way to find out, which is just to wait until mid August or even late August, when many of the second edition cards uh, of the manga rare are graded by PSA, and when they hit the market, it is going to be very very interesting to see what would happen to the price of the original print run. So, um, yeah, that's what I think. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. This is Collect Pokemon. Bye-bye.